So today is gonna be a little bit different kind of video and I think you're gonna like it because if it would be me who's watching that kind of guy who's doing different kind of review for the old cars it would be such an interesting video so we're gonna do today that's the Lexus RX 350 and that's 2010 with 108,000 miles I'm gonna do a little bit more information later on in this video about how I got it and what kind of condition I got it but for now I love it I love it what I got and the price I pay for the car is just insanely nice because I can make the money from the car again as a used car dealer I'm always trying to buy something and sell something and make the profit for my living and I think that's one of the kind of car I bought it and I got lucky so besides that I want to show you to you what kind of SUV you can buy around 15,000 and is it going to survive for a long period of time is it like going to be unbreakable not going to give you a lot of headache this car that's the one you're looking to get I think if your budget around 15,000 you're looking to get all-wheel drive car you do have a family you want to fit an SUV and between the Honda or Lexus I would always go with Lexus because the Lexus is just insanely quality made for the not lifetime but made for like the huge amount of time up front of you so you're not going to get headache if you're going to compare the old Lexus RX with something newer I think the quality on the older one much better because they've been trying to improve themselves but same time impress the people so the people can buy the Lexus and they're gonna see oh that's kind of Toyota but same time they're gonna touch it feel it leather especially leather on the Lexuses it's totally different it's super soft it's just insanely nice quality when you drive in the car inside you can feel it you know what I mean so you can like going over the bump going on the city or somewhere on the freeway Lexus just flies yes it is burning a lot of gas it's not so expensive on the maintenance maybe a little bit more expensive than Toyota but again if you know the parts where to buy if you know the mechanic who can do it it might gonna be even cheaper than Corolla that's one of the point why it's so dirty and I didn't wash it I just again want to show it to you the way I'm getting the car and the way it comes because there is a huge process between when you buy the car at auction when you bid in on it you know you want this car like this car I won about two weeks ago and just today it came from <clears throat> San Francisco so there is always not problem but always questions about transportation when the car gonna come is the car gonna get the dead battery or not maybe somebody drove it maybe the battery drained so you always preparing yourself before you're gonna meet the car from the auction so that's basically the car I got from the auction and I got it online so I didn't have a chance to go myself because number one I'm in Los Angeles and this car I got from Silicon Valley means San Francisco so the only thing I can see when I'm bidding on the car that's the CR condition report and the condition report for this car was pretty good I think 4.2 or something but they announced it as a problem with transmission that's what I'm gonna find out because uh, usually I'm taking all kind of risk otherwise you cannot make money in this business if you're not gonna take a risk not gonna take a chance but overall it's dirty it is and I'm gonna wash it and show it to you the way it looks but right now in my opinion it looks really good so that's what we're sitting inside right now and I'm gonna start it up the battery a little bit weak and uh, doesn't have a big screen but we do have a backup camera right here in the mirror right so we have AC running it's good we have a low fuel that's okay no check engine light it has 108,000 miles on it but again that's a Lexus and who knows Lexus it's not the mileage you're gonna worry about engine or transmission or any kind of other stuff because it just runs forever same as a Toyota but uh, luxury way so now what I'm doing next I'm plugging my scanner and I want to see what kind of codes this car has it's a cheap one simple uh, there is nothing specific about it so I do have a readings complete 8 uh, no codes so basically this car ready for smoke check 
what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna drive it a little bit here around the block and I'm gonna take it for the smoke check since the car is ready because again when you're taking the car when you're taking the car for any kind of service oil change or even detail they might gonna run the car or they might gonna drain the battery by listening music open the doors you know don't don't take the don't turn off the radio or ignition and it's gonna be on and on and on so the battery gonna die and i have to drive it again to do the smoke check basically this car it's all ready and i have to do the smoke check anyway and after i'm gonna decide if i'm gonna keep this car for retail or i'm gonna take it to the auction because i got it for the good price and uh basically i'm doing that to make money and sometimes to make the people happy but either way even if i'm doing a wholesale deal at the auction people still happy because i'm selling all my cars guarantee all the way green light means if something on the car wholesaler can take it back to auction and they're gonna return it to me that's the only way i'm working uh, and i'm pretty good about it so for now we have a lexus 108,000 miles on it and it's a good condition car all monitors ready for that he needs some needs some uh detail but pretty much the seats just dirty a little bit it's not damaged at all the power rear door i didn't know it's working but it is working still good so the cool seats i check it already it's all good the backup camera it's working ac is super cold no errors no trouble codes nothing what about what's going on in the back on the back there is some trash as always since i'm getting the cars from new car stores as a trading but it's pretty clean i mean need some detail clean up and all that kind of stuff but the door panels they are in a great shape they're not sticky yet because some lexuses over the time especially in california they start falling kind not falling apart but getting like sticky like the dashboard on the camry or the lexus doing the same in the trunk what we got here we got the spare tire full size we got some other stuff we don't have a cover for the trunk area that's kind of normal i don't know why but people looks like keeping it they taking it and put it in the garage and forget about it or maybe something else nice i mean the way this lexus drives right now and all the rx's drives it's just insanely smooth you know it's super soft the suspension working perfectly engine transmission they balanced that's passenger seat and we do have a lot of uh, adjustments on it that's super nice cool like it so the dashboard like i say it's not sticky yet it didn't get enough sun probably because the car was in san francisco it's not so hot as in los angeles so we're gonna do some video around the car before i'm gonna take this car for cleaning and before i'm gonna get it dumped not dumped before i'm gonna get dropped at the action so we have a power steering going up and down it's still all working all the buttons here they are working lexus that's the quality so what's going on under the hood i think i showed it you already but that's just the engine full of dust needs to be washed and cleaned if i would do retail for sure i would do so but meantime that's 2010 and look how covered the engine area it's just insane i mean not not because it's luxury just because if you're going to do the service at your house you're going to open the hood you're going to see there is a lot of panels covered and all you can do just add some water maybe add some oil to the engine and the brake fluid for sure if your brake pads gonna get low you might gonna get light on so instead of replace the brake pads at your house you always can add some uh, brake fluid and do replacement for the brake pads later on but same time the light gonna go away so it is amazing car people love it and i kind of like it too i'm not a fan of lexus it's like i say i'm not a huge fan of honda or toyota but lexus is just one of the car you can buy it in any kind of condition and it's still gonna drive back and forth at least it's super nice 
it's super nice especially after i'm going to clean it it's going to be so shiny and so cool so for sure people are going to beat on it like crazy so let's see the way it drives i mean like i say it is a lexus and we are going about 65 70 miles per hour and it runs amazing so there is no problems whatsoever and uh, the car is going to auction just like i say for the quick sale nothing shaking the brakes are amazing and it's beautiful it's beautiful weather the car runs great ac working fine i love it i mean i think i got a super good deal on this car and uh, i kind of feeling myself as a winner because it's not everyday win and like i say sometimes i'm taking the risk sometimes i'm taking the chances and those chances are i would say 50 50 and that's the 50 percent of the winning the car like that just because i think it's a lexus and the brand lexus toyota itself proven you can you can take the car at any mileage and with most of the time with any announcements and just be confident i mean do what you know or if you don't know what you're doing just do some more research do more learning studying online youtube video whatever or do more practice more practice means buy more cars try to fix it try to flip it if you want to do kind of business like that amazing car love it so so much since I'm getting a busy day today, I'm doing kind of couple cars video, and that's the one of them. I uh, that's the amazing car. <laughs> All the cars are amazing because again, I'm working with the cars and I love what I'm doing. I love my job. I love all kind of cars and especially. I know all the problems, most of the problems with all the cars, whatever I'm getting. So I'm not scared to buy any kind of car, even if it's uh, so expensive to fix. And some people jumping off from the car when it's going through the auction. For example, this beautiful 2014 Range Rover, Land Rover, Range Rover HSC full size. <clears throat> I mean, that's insane. The price I pay for that, you not gonna believe that. That's why I'm not going to even tell you how much I pay for this car, but it's super cheap. I mean, uh, honestly, for the price I pay for the car, I can buy, like the example of Mercedes, I can buy used Corolla, but not even 2020, something, hmm, I would say 2014, 2015 Corolla with about 120, 110,000 miles. That's how much I pay for this beautiful one owner Range Rover full size. HSE it's just amazing the way it drives feels luxury but it feels like luxury it's a little bit tired you know when it's like the same way if you buy nice suit you know beautiful suit you paid I don't know 20 30 thousand for the suit and you just using it every day using it using it using it after like five seven years your suit your so expensive suit is still together all the parts they are together but it feels like and it looks like your suit is worn out so that's exactly the same thing what's going on with range rover range rover is just beautiful there is a lot of different options inside the car the panoramic roof you know the navigation beautiful sound system uh cruise control adaptive one 360 cameras on some of them but parking sensors and all in all in all of that a lot but after five seven years of usage for this car number one the depreciation is just going super significantly crazy it's just going down on the price from ninety thousand hundred thousand all the way to twenty or sometimes even more than 20,000. So it's about 
15, 17, 18,000, you can buy that kind of car on the market. I'm not talking about the auction, I'm talking about market, retail market. So maybe mileage a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Depends how you're going to uh, push the owner who's selling the car, maybe not the dealer who wants to sell it. If you're going to push them more, they might going to give you more discount and you're going to buy it for less than 20,000. Maybe you're going to find it in a good condition. And believe me, usually owners, they do understand that. They do understand the car is old, it has some miles on it, and it's super expensive to fix any kind of stuff. And that's the perfect example about this car. I got it as a guarantee at the auction, but it was caution on the engine. So basically, it was no video, no sound of the engine. I had no idea if it's knocking, if it's just like, you know, making some ticking, tapping noise, or it's completely gone. And I have to rebuild it or I have to buy the used one. But the problem of this V6 supercharged engine, if I buy the use, if I want to buy the used engine, that's about nine, ten thousand with low mileage, 40, 50,000 miles. So for example, I'm gonna pay eight thousand for the used engine, right? So for example, I bought this car for fifteen thousand at the auction. <clears throat> the fair deal at the auction for this car about twenty twenty-two. So I bought the car for fifteen thousand. That's what I'm talking about, taking a risk, taking a chance. Uh, I bought it basically blind because the car itself is guaranteed, but caution on engine. So it could be any problem with the engine. If it's a caution on engine, means that's it. Uh, they not, actually not guarantee that. So they let it go less than MMR, significantly less than MMR. And uh, the price for the engine, I check it out right away. So it's like 8,000 to buy it. I asked the mechanics, how much are you going to charge me? So decent mechanic they say maybe for you i can do it between like thousand or fifteen hundred because there's a lot of fluids we need to drop we're gonna put new oil new coolant maybe some spark plugs maybe maybe some other hoses so think about fifteen hundred if it's gonna be cheaper it's gonna be cheaper i'm like okay ninety five hundred so i bought the car fifteen plus fee whatever and i have to put the new engine it's gonna be more than twenty more than twenty two so why should i buy it just because i took a chance and uh I risk it so the car came on actually my guy he told it to me the guy who's always bringing the cars from the auction from the uh, the one uh, far away from the place where I am so he brought it and he said you know the engine is so bad on this car so don't drive it and I pull it out and it seems like you know it's making a lot of different noise uh, clicking clacking and uh, so I was thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done. So probably I did a huge mistake. I bought a used Range Rover and the engine is gone. So I have to buy the used one uh, or do something on this one. So number one, I was thinking there is a, uh, there is like, it feels like the misfire and the knocking noise and, uh, and this and that. The RPM always going up and down, but the car was cold. So I'm like, okay, let me warm it up a little bit. So I was sitting in the car, warm it up. And the RPM went down from 3,000 all the way to 1,000, and after it was 755 or whatever RPM supposed to be on the idle. <clears throat> and there is no noise. I mean, all the noise gone. It was like no noise, no noise in the chain or some knocking noise. I'm like, figure out, okay, probably engine not that bad. I step on the gas a couple of times, there is no noise at all. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Looks like I think there is a lot of quotes, and usually. If you know the way all the car works, all the cars, doesn't matter Range Rover or Ford or Toyota, if there is one code, one problem, for example, you do have a misfire or you do have an air leak on your intake, it's going to cause <coughs> chicken light for the air intake, maybe misfire, maybe random misfire, and maybe a lot of different other codes. Because, because basically, your whole system in the car, your PCM not working right, it's not getting the right data from the sensors, and it's going everywhere so when i plug this counter i check it out it was like over 40 different codes for different type of problems i'm like wow probably engine is really gone but again i'm not i'm not uh i'm not panic at all at my first sight whatever i see at the car i have to figure it out you know so what i did usually what i'm doing i'm resetting all the lights i'm not going by whatever happened two months ago, or maybe somebody drove it like half year with check engine light on, usually on the range rovers, it's kind of normal. So basically I reset all the codes. I started up, the car was already warm and I see check engine light not coming back. I'm like, that's strange. I mean, if there is a problem, no noise, no check engine light on. I drove it a little bit. 
seems to be decent and um, and after i drove it back to my lot i parked it for a little bit so it cooled down i came back started up it's making again noise kind of misfire whatever i figured out that's air leak so i checked the codes the first codes came for the both side left and right bank one bank two that's the air leak that's the system to lean and i was thinking oh maybe maybe this maybe that maybe it could be a lot of different problems but I, what, what i found out what i found actually <clears throat> At the end of my research number one it was kind of simple thing but not so simple so that's the original pcv valve right that's what i got for this car and that's the original and it looks like it is new because the membrane that rubber piece for the pcv it's new but the problem is whoever put it on this car they broke this clip so they broke this clip and basically it was sucking air on the side i think the original one it smells a lot of oil. It smells like oil and the gas. So the original one is supposed to have one more clip, and it's supposed to be tight when you click it in. So, but it was not. And this place was a little bit open and sucking some air. That was my air leak number one, and it was causing a lot of different problems. Number two, on the back of the intake, on the back of the supercharge, there is like a symposer, symposer, some kind of intake thing. Uh, like a PCV valve, but it's not. It has a lot of different tubes, uh, plastic piece. So that one, it's leaking air a lot. So it's basically because it's a plastic hose, and over the time, same as a BMW, Mercedes, or Range Rover, looks like doing the same. Uh, over the time, that plastic hose just crack. And when uh, when I did smoke test, not smoke check, the smoke test at my mechanic shop friend we found that problem so basically the holes are leaking from everywhere and that's what's causing check engine light especially when the car is cold on the warm when it's warmer up it's sucking a lot of air but it's sucking a lot of air from the outside so the sensor is not understanding what's going on with the engine and it just threw in different codes um that's how i'm getting system to lean on the bank one bank two i ordered that part not original one because original it's super expensive and uh, i'm not doing uh that kind of sometimes i mean super rare not super rare but especially for the car like that if you can buy original part or maybe good aftermarket part three four times cheaper than the dealer you should go that way you know i'm always going to ebay because it's cheaper and i do have a time because i have a lot of different projects sitting around so this car for example i'm waiting apart i'm going to put it on the side and i can do something else i can i can figure it out and uh, work on some other cars because i do have a lot of headache i have to handle so basically i'm waiting this part right now it's supposed to come back to supposed to come today or tomorrow that's what delivery uh scheduled and i'm going to replace it and probably i'm going to eliminate all the problems and the car is going to be fine so it's a uh, i think it has two owners it's really good shape i mean all the seats inside panels outside it's all original paint there is no scratches no dents it's a brand new tires you know the car is clean it has no oil leak and uh, what about the sound from the engine uh when you start it up and the car is cold it's making the noise from not from the chains not from the engine it's making the noise from the supercharger and i start checking about uh, v6 because v6 i never touched the supercharger myself i never replaced any part on it but when i start checking it online or uh, on ebay there is a lot of repair kits for the supercharger v6 on the range rover so basically the main part where the pulley sitting and the bell going through the pulley there is a like a bearing so that bearing going bad the same way uh back in the days i used to fix uh, ctv ctsv the cadillacs 6.2 supercharger it was exactly the same thing but the bearing was making a lot of noise so here it's making noise when the car is cold basically the belt getting a lot of pressure from different other things and the supercharger pulley and the shop getting a lot of pressure so basically the bearing starts making a huge noise it's like like you know kind of uh not even clicking it's just like a grinding noise so it's coming from there and i can buy only the pulley and the bearings from the ebay for about 300 and that part it's not so hard to replace i can even replace it myself but again i'm not doing crazy kind of stuff like that replacing some parts fixing the car just because i don't have a time even if i can do uh engine rebuild for example i'm not going to do it 
just because it's a waste of time and I can do a lot of different things. But I do know how the things work, especially on uh, any kind of car, because I do have a huge experience of my lifetime with the cars. And uh, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I just love my job. And uh, let's see what's going on with this car. Let's see how it's still alive after almost 10 years in the road in Los Angeles, because this car originally was bought in Los Angeles and somebody drove it all this period of time here. So basically 10 years, 100,000 miles, they've been doing 10,000 miles a year, which is super kind of cool because usually average about 20,000. There was kind of one day of my life with the cars I'm buying from the auction. And uh, thank you so much guys for watching me. Put some thumbs up, put some comments below. You know, if you're in the same business, you're watching it just for fun. So let me know, maybe you have the same experience as me. Maybe you have a lot of cars sitting in the back. Put some comments below. Should I do the video like that and show it to you how many cars I'm getting in the condition like this and what I'm doing, what I'm spending on it to make it ready for retail, wholesale, doesn't matter. Or should I do the video like the car is ready, it's clean up and it's all good, good to go. Just, you know, some options and this and that. But uh, again, thank you so much for watching it. See you next time. Bye bye. I'm